I was not going to make a video about this because I've been taking very similar equipment bits recently and it would just be very similar. However, when I opened this one up, it is a little ozone generator, I found that it wasn't using a potted module inside it. Everything is on the circuit board. So I think this is worth exploring, particularly given that a lot of the stuff from this company seems to be quite well designed. It seems to be quite good. One thing I'm noting here is that the low voltage cable come in. It is a 12 volt power supply. This is a vehicle ozone generator. Uh, it comes in with uh, the cable being fastened to this uh, pillar as a restraint. But unfortunately, it's pushed right up hard against this high voltage metal plate. I'm not so sure that's a good idea. Maybe it could be routed an alternative route. But I digress. I'm going to go and reverse engineer the circuit board and we shall take a look at the schematic and see if it is indeed as good quality as I think it is. The reverse engineering is complete and it's exactly what I was expecting. Slightly retro because it's not a really a new product and all fairly logical. It just seems well designed. So it's all based around this high voltage transformer. It has two windings in the the primary side, it's got the main primary winding, plus it's also got a feedback winding. And then it's got a separate high voltage winding, and it really is separate. Unusually, it's got this uh, pin here uh, and this pin here, but it keeps it separate completely from the primary winding pins. That's possibly why it's got this 10 mega ohm resistor connecting the high voltage side to the low voltage side. But you can see that it's got the fine turns that loop across, and it's not as fine as normal. With the cheapy Chinese ones, you, they tend to use super fine wire and run it right up to the point that they only need one diode and one capacitor on the output for their ionizers and ozone generators. In this case, they've not run it up so high, which takes a lot of strain off this. And then they've used a three-stage multiplier. Effectively, they could have added another capacitor in and the position of this resistor here, 10 mega ohm resistor, could have been another high voltage diode. They've just kept their options open to actually boost that higher. The switching is done by this transistor here um, and most of the circuitry is a feedback circuit for that transistor and there's a lot of things like, say for instance, this resistor here and this capacitor here, they're snubber network across the um, transformer winding. No, it's the transistor, it's the to protect the transistor against the back EMF spikes when it turns off. It's all very logical, it's quite, it's unusually well designed. Um, anything else worth mentioning? Yes, there is actually. I thought it really odd that the colour bands had a green tolerance band in these resistors, but in reality, uh, whatever colour it was has gone green. I don't know if it's reacted to the ozone of the unit being in operation. I see a little bit of green crustiness uh, appearing in these leads as well. It might just been I'm, I didn't operate it for a very long time. It's maybe a flux issue with the modern uh, lead-free solders, or it could be the sort of amount of ozone that operate in the vicinity of this because some will get pulled through the unit. But if you wish to have a go at reverse engineering it, then I have flipped the image down below so you can actually see. This is the component side. This is the, the back of the circuit board, but the tracks are all sort of aligned for that. And we shall take a look at the actual schematic. It's very neat. It's very interesting. I shall zoom in on this. We start with the 12 volt supply come in, there's a switch and there's a polarity protection diode. This is nice, I wish I would have put polarity protection diodes in, it's very common for well designed stuff. Then there's an LED and a, a resistor, 1.5 thousand ohm resistors, 1k5. Um, and uh, the LED, I believe it's a gallium phosphide, just a standard traditional green reliable. There's a 100 microfarad uh, smoothing capacitor. And then we've got, well, let's start. The primary is switched by the transistor. The transistor is a C2328A. And it looks as though they've changed that at some point because it doesn't tally up with the actual uh, the, the pinout on the actual circuit board. They've kind of turned it to fit the existing pinholes. There's the snubber network across it. 4.7 ohms, 100 nano. That's quite neat. Uh, the... Transistor has a pull-down resistor to keep it in a stable state, I guess, at turn on or just provide part of the feedback circuitry and a little 10 nanofarad capacitor for filtering. So the primary that's energised by this couples across the feedback winding. There's this 10 nanofarad capacitor. I'm not quite sure the function of that. 
There's a 1K resistor, which uh, limits the current to one level, but then there's another resistor here and a capacitor. And this forms a sort of feedback network that will initially provide, while that capacitor charges up, it will provide a good solid switching transition um, when the transistor first turns on from the feedback from the winding, I suppose ultimately until it gets into the effectively into full swing. It's quite an odd design. It's very sort of retro and analog. It's it's quite neat. Um, but then that capacitor will charge up and then current will continue to flow through this 39k resistor. It just seems to control the actual the base current depending on the how hard this transistor's turned on, the magnetic field in the transformer. The uh, secondary winding over here is effectively treated as a separate winding, although it's in the same bob and it has its own two terminals. The zero-volt reference, I presume this is to avoid flashover on the transformer, but the zero-volt effectively side of it, the positive side actually, is connected to the zero-volt rail of the primary side by this 10 mega-ohm resistor. We have a 340-ohm secondary with the three high voltage diodes and three 470 picofarad 6 kilovolt capacitors. That generates the extremely high voltage, two current limiting 10 mega ohm resistors, and then the needle point in front of the holes that actually creates the, uh, the discharge in the end and creates the airflow. I just jam my finger under that spike. Uh, it's nicely made. Everything's nicely made in these. The case is quite smart as well. The case fit isn't quite as perfect on this smaller one as it is in the bigger one, but it's a very stylish and complex case. I get the feeling this probably, this case was possibly designed before 3D design was so big. It's possibly got sort of traditional design aesthetics to it. It's very neat. But there we have it. Uh, it's an ozone generator. It will generate some level of negative ions out of the thing, but it's mostly... Uh, all about the ozone to freshen the air and add in the components that get used up in door in indoor ears. I have to say, I wouldn't necessarily want to run this while I was actually driving a car or van, but as a device to freshen it up, you know, to get rid of stale smells, uh, it wouldn't be bad. But I definitely, you know, for keep in mind that this has uh, six spikes and six holes. Whereas the little unit I use in my fridge at the moment has just one spike and one hole and only turns on every so often and yet the fridge stinks of ozone. This thing puts out copious quantities of ozone for its size and power. It's only about 100 milliamps at 12 volts. It's basically less than one and a half watts. But um, I think there'd be just a wee bit too much uh, to have all the windows closed of your vehicle. And as long as you had air flowing in, it might not be so bad if you had air flowing through the vehicle. But if it was all sealed up, this thing could produce a bit too much ozone for comfort. It could cause fatigued eyes and things like that, as happens, and a slight hoarse throat. But it's very neat, very retro, very well designed. And before I put this in, I'm going to actually experiment with using other uh, bits of circuitry in here to uh, see if I can get a decent sort of flow from smaller circuitry. But I wondered why they didn't use just an didn't switch in just a generic Chinese module, you know, one of the standard potted ones. And I guess the reason for that is that many of the little Chinese modules push everything to the limit, and uh, they have tiny transformers, and their voltage rating of the components is really pushed hard. With this, by using their own transformer and the traditional circuitry and multiple stages uh, on the output of the multiplier stages, it means that all the stress is taken off these, so there's a good chance they did it, simply because it's going to last longer. But there we go. I think this is an old product. I got one of these ages ago. I think this has been around a long time. It's good to see it still for sale, that it's still going strong. But there we go. Uh, the Pure Mate, what's it called? Well, the Pure Mate ionizer, the vehicle ionizer, uh, neat little device, very well designed, very retro, but pretty good. <laughs>